In this video, we will be attempting to 3D print and center aluminum again. The approach I'll be using involves microwave centering. This sounds fancy, but it's not. It actually just involves a basic microwave that I ordered from Amazon. The components I'm showing here will be used to cast the microwave kiln. The grayish piece is actually a silicon carbide element that I've printed using virtual foundry filament. This acts as a heat collector in the microwave, allowing the parts to be centered. I'm using castable refractory here, and just to show, this mold was not perfect, but it still will work to perform the center. I've produced a lid and a crucible to avoid arcs escaping in the microwave. Once dry, I'll be doing a burnout of the PLA in my regular kiln. The cast wasn't great, but the mold wasn't great either. Uh, I didn't quite level the bed too well. Um, this one turned out okay, but as you can see, the refractory is still inside. I'm going to probably take this out, clean it up, and uh, paint on a little bit more uh, refractory so that we seal these up so it looks a little nicer. Uh, I'll show you after it's been post-processed. I've never done this before, but it seemed like the right thing to do to keep the heat in. I just added a little extra water to the refractory so it painted well. This is the first time that I put the kiln in the microwave. It was done so that the silicon carbide elements would sort of harden up and not just crumble out into the refractory. I also just stuffed a little aluminum piece in there that hadn't been debound before just to see what it would do if I was to just microwave it without putting it in the kiln first. It didn't really work, so that's what this is here. As you can see, the silicon carbide did embed into the walls. And here we'll be printing our test piece, which is done in virtual foundry aluminum filament. And I'll be using this going forward to test our center cycles. Seems to be a flop. Okay, so we've tested a few things during that little shop aside, and we're getting a little closer. But this part still isn't quite right. Okay, this might not look like much, but after a little bit of cleanup, uh, we seem to have a semi-successful aluminum Hanya mask. This is very small, so some of the detail was lost. Uh, the horns seem to have fall, fallen off, uh, but that may have been during uh, shuffling or something uh, during the centering process. Uh, this does seem to be quite hard. Um, I'm gonna I've scraped this off with a steel wire brush, and nothing seems to be deforming. Um, so uh, we'll clean this up a little bit more and uh, see what happens next. To show this is metal, well, let's do a drop test. In the moment, it really did feel metal, and when I was filming this, I didn't actually think it was going to break. Doing these experiments, I never really know how they're going to turn out, but I always learn something. At this point, I had a hunch that my zinc paste formed a contaminant in the refractory that caused better centers. Okay, so this test 
we'll be splitting out um, some of the um, additive here into this crucible and the we're going to put a little bit more ballast on top and then we'll rest the mask inside and we'll put a little ballast a little bit more additive on the top of the ballast the other test is what you saw just prior um, with it poured as well directly on top so this is additive directly onto the mask and we'll be uh, firing these to debind first and they'll be going in for the same uh, microwave center cycles so that we can compare the differences between each process. At least that was the plan until I put this one into the microwave. Well, that's not good. Uh, we seem to have burned through uh, the side. So I'm gonna take that one out. Okay, so that one was a wash, but uh, we ended up getting this chunk, it looks like of the element itself. This was the ultra molten red hot part. Uh, I did a quick test on the outside and it was reading about 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is uh, the silicon carbide uh, element. Now, I don't quite know uh, what happened here, but it's pretty hard. Um, so anyway, just noting this uh, for uh, some research a little later. Okay, kind of cool. Not sure if this part succeeded or not, but it is in the right form. It's very hot. Going to quench this real quick. Hopefully it doesn't burst into pieces. Cool. Since my last UPA test, this is showing pretty good promise. Alright, so we won't call this one a total success but I believe you should be able to see the metallic grains. Um, every shiny piece here is a bit of metal. This is crumbly. Um, so, but right here on the edge you can see the uh, grains are starting to form. And if I break this, which it can crumble. You can see in between there we started to fuse uh, metal together so I think all this needs is a little bit longer time or a, a stronger microwave and I will be getting a stronger microwave here pretty soon uh, within the next day or two and uh, hopefully we'll see some better results. So anyway, I am pretty excited about this, um, but uh, unfortunately nothing great to show right now. Upon further inspection, the center of the mask would not crumble. It's quite sturdy. Uh, Hope that the next one is going to be the winner. Anyway, I'll catch you guys later. Okay, we have another side quest here. Um, had an extra one of these silicon uh, carbide elements. I fixed it with some glue and I think I'm going to pour some castable refractory around this. The idea is that this would be a plug and play heating element. <laughs> so a regular crucible should work. Um, You'd just be able to pop one of these in uh, down to the, down at the bottom or the top, and that would be the heat collector, um, rather than embedding them into the actual crucible itself. May produce a little better results. I don't know. This is just something I wanted to show as well. Okay, so I repeated the uh, sprinkle test with the V2 crucible. Um, I only 
changed one thing where I added a little bit of time to the center cycle, uh, just probably about five or six minutes. Uh, so nothing too crazy, but maybe it will be enough. Uh, so anyway, this is pretty hot right now. I'm not going to touch it because that's bad. But uh, I'll be taking the lid off in just a few minutes and see what we have. Cool. Okay, so we have a little better result than the last time. Uh, this is pretty solid here. Um, I it's quite strong. Um, the extremities, like the ear, uh, the horns, uh, and some of the other pieces up above where the casing was not um, so uh, prevalent uh, do not appear to uh, have centered properly but this did and I don't know if it can quite capture some of the areas but there is some clear metallic sheen going on even without any polishing um, I have half a mind to just see uh, if this will uh, center even further, um, and I'm probably going to do that. So I may just experiment with this, um, since I have it, put a little bit more flux on top and uh, see if we can get it even, uh, even better fused, um, but certainly promising. Yeah. So if uh, if that destroys the piece, so be it. All for science. Wow. This is. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm just pretty happy about this. I uh, I zap this for another fifteen minutes uh, with a little bit of flux added, and I I hope you can see what I'm seeing here. But if you take a look at the brow. Can you see the shine? This is aluminum. Um, and I was able to reproduce it. And it's strong. Uh, this is... This is not crumbly at all. I think with just a little bit of polish you can really see that something even this small just you know this small captured every bit of detail down to the layer lines and just with a little bit of polishing you could really get a uh, quite beautiful part with this beauty isn't everything with aluminum there's a lot of benefits with this metal um, but I think it's a good start uh, to, you know, see the potential for what this approach can do. I hope to perfect this a little bit more. Can't thank the Virtual Foundry enough for producing such a quality product. And anyway, I hope to continue experimenting and we'll be sharing my progress as I... Uh, as I make it. So thanks for tuning in. I think I'm going to conclude the video with this one.